so yeah, as Claire said, we're, we're part of a, a team and this program has co-creation at the heart of it. Today, we're giving you a taste of what this program could be. Um, you're going to hear from some speakers that are doing some great work already in Coventry. Um, you're going to get to know each other and you're going to get to work together on your own ideas and through um, some social activism training later this afternoon after the break. Uh, the partnership that has brought to get today together, did that make sense? Today together, yes, um, is made up of the City of Culture team here in Coventry. People make it work. We're based down in London, but we work with all sorts of different companies to help make change happen and to help people acquire leadership skills. Um, we've got Beat Freaks Collective as well here today. Uh, Coventry University Social Enterprise um, and Warwick Art Centre. So those partners together are help co-creating this experience and then once the cohort is selected, the cohort then gets to co-create their own learning program through this 2.5 year, two and a half year journey. Um, and it's going to be really sculpted to your own needs in terms of learning and your vision for change, completely sculpted to the change that you want to make. So I'm going to pass back to Claire to tell you a little bit more about the program. I'm terrible at catching, which is why I said to Zara, don't throw it to me, please, just pass it to me. Um, but hopefully today, if we're hearing from people around the room, then we can use this. It's called a catch box. Um, someone's already asked us, where do you buy one of these? Um, and it's a great kind of more sort of tangible way of having a microphone and making voices more easily heard in a space. Um, so I am going to do my best as quickly as possible to tell you about what the City of Culture Leadership Programme is and who it's for. Um, and then later on today, we'll be able to go into a little bit more detail about next steps after the taster um, that you'll experience this afternoon. Um, so it's a two-year programme, the City of Culture Leadership Programme, for a group of 15 people, eventually. Um, and it's about developing ideas, initiatives, projects that are born from the people that we meet in Coventry, um, and working together with those 15 members of what we're calling the cohort, that group of people, um, to develop a programme responding to their ideas, responding to your ideas, responding to the change that you want to make happen in the city. Um, there, there'll be a sort of process um, to meet people, like today is one of the moments in that process to meet people in Coventry. Um, and the idea is that you get a flavour of what the programme could be like, um, but we won't actually know what the components are of that programme until we dig deeper into the aspirations and the ambitions of the people that are going to form that cohort. We hope that today we'll give you that taster, we'll get you to meet you know, some other people from in your city, um, and will help, we'll help you to think a little bit more about what change you might want to make happen in this brilliant place. Um, so the idea is that between now and the 30th of March, um, we, we work with people to develop ideas, we invite applications from everybody to be part of that group of 15, and then on the 30th of March, those 15 people will come back here and we will start to develop the programme and the components that it will include to help make those ideas a reality. So who is it for? Um, we are hoping for a group of um, 15 people from a whole range of backgrounds and experiences and um, what we really want to do is to open this program, this process up from the beginning so that we really start to hear from some people who we may not have um, included in programs before or people that may have experienced some barriers to progression. So we're particularly interested in um, people who have um, 
what we're interested in is redressing the imbalance and the inequalities that we believe exist in the city. So um, we're wanting to make this process as inclusive as we can in order to reach some people that may not have been in included before. Um, it's really about people who want to make social change and who want to collaborate with others to make that change happen. We are particularly in interested in people who identify with certain protected characteristics. Um, that's a really formal term, but what we mean by that is we're interested in people who identify as black or minority ethnic, people who have a disability, people who come from a low socioeconomic background, people who haven't been able to progress in education for whatever reason or another. Um, and so we are looking for those particular characteristics in order to think about and um, try and prevent barriers to inclusion that may have been experienced before. Um, so in the application process, we've tried to keep it as light touch as we can. All the information can be found on the website, but we're going to talk through that in a bit more detail later on. Um, but really, we want you to tell us your story in that application, to tell us a bit about yourself, um, and to tell us um, why it is that you want to be a part of the programme and what change you want to make see happen. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I don't want to talk for too long. There will be an opportunity for questions later on. And as I said, the, the exact next steps from today we'll talk about um, later on in, in this afternoon's um, session. How great. Lovely to see you all. Um, this is an amazing program and a fantastic um, opportunity that we've been able to support um, and bring to Coventry. So I'm so pleased to so many, see so many of you uh, in the room. Um, Zara and the team had asked me to just talk a little bit, I suppose, um, about me and um, I suppose around this whole notion of um, making sustainable change um, for the benefit of communities. Um, so I thought maybe I'd just start with, I suppose, just thinking from my perspective um, why the arts and culture has been so important and why I think it's so important. I've always felt, right from a young age, that being creative has been a real outlet. So from about the age of three, I started doing ballet lessons. I was never very good at it, but I did it until I was 16, uh, just because I loved being with the other people that did it, and we had fun doing it. Um, and then when I was at school, I joined the school choir, and you know, it was just lovely being with other children and kind of. Kind of, I suppose letting off steam, but doing it kind of by singing and, and kind of enjoying ourselves. And I suppose as I've gone through life, um, being artistic, being creative, I'm not an artist and I would never claim to be, um, but that kind of artistic activity that we all participate, we all dance, we all sing, even if we're really bad at it in the shower. Um, we all love going to or listening to music or going to concerts or watching the TV or listening to a drama on the radio. And we all engage in these things. Um, and I suppose it's a form of escapism. It gives us something uh, to, I suppose it's a, it's a way of enjoying our life in a different way. Like thinking like, you know, we work really hard during the day and then what happens when we go home? We eat and go to sleep. And I think art and culture and, and those kinds of activities that happen in that <coughs> environment, they're the things that connect us, that join us together, and give us that human time with other people, that create those memories that we carry with us in our lives, those amazing holidays we have, the amazing meals that you might have had out at someone's house. Or, and so I suppose it's, for me, um, it's been very transformative um, and, and helped me to really think about life in a very different way. And I suppose thinking about life and other people's lives, not just my own, and the way in which um, art and creativity and culture can really play such a massive role. Um, we've, just been, we've just been talking recently about a project we're hoping to do next year, um, and just talking a lot about people, um, you know, so many people now feel lonely or, or feel isolated and and they lack that genuine connection with other people. One in five. One in five, there you go. It's a 
massive thing. It's 20% of people. It's huge. Um, and actually, the role of our culture and creativity is to prevent that, is to bring people together, to override that. Um, so it's really important for me that when we're creating these major programs like City of Culture, we really think about what is it that we want to do, you know, apart from having an amazing year with loads of amazing events and activities and festivals and all the things we like, what is it we want to achieve? Uh, where do we want to get to? You know, by the end of this year, um, and maybe the end of 2022 and 23 and 24, what will be the long-lasting effects of having done this program? And it can't just be those amazing moments that we've had in 2021, although there'll be loads of amazing moments, by the way. Um, it has to be about that genuine connection and that genuine engagement that we all have with each other, um, strengthening our bonds, understanding each other better, making our society more inclusive for everyone, removing some of the barriers that prevent people from connecting or joining in or taking part in their city. So that's kind of how I feel about it, that it's a really um, amazing moment for this city and for all the projects I've worked on before, it's all about people coming together and those shared, uh, those shared moments but also that vision that we're all working towards. So whether it's about, you know, trying to create a healthier city uh, where people um, feel healthier, feel happier, whether it's about breaking down kind of um, those issues around uh, isolation and loneliness, or whether it's about challenging kind of, you know, people's lack of understanding about each other and who we all are and where we've come from and the journeys we've been on and the journeys we're going to continue to take as we move forward. And I've always thought that um, artists are pioneers. They've pioneered so many things in the years that have gone by. Um, and I think what makes them extraordinary is that they come at things from a different place. They don't look at the world in this kind of narrow-minded vacuum that many other people seem to do, politicians maybe. Um, but actually, they look at the world from lots of different perspectives. Um, and they're really good at thinking about you know, who we are and what our place in the world is, and that actually we're all the same. We're all born in the same way. Uh, we all need to eat, we all need to breathe. And I think artists are really good at thinking about that bigger picture and, and the role of people and humans uh, within it. And I think it's interesting being here in Coventry and you know, one of the things we talk a lot about is the, um, the whole kind of activism of the city, the social activism, the fact that people in the city actually care about each other uh, and will go the extra mile to help out. Um, and that's a really fantastic thing. And we think of some of the artists that have done that here, people like Jerry Dammers when he created the two-tone movement. You know, it was at a time when racism was terrible all over the country, not just in Coventry. Um, and he created this movement by bringing different musicians together and saying, we can come together, we can play together, we can sing together, we can change the world together. Um, so from my perspective, this is why it's so important. And there's an amazing um, TED talk. Uh, I know that we've got the commentary TED talks coming up quite soon. Um, haven't we? Yeah. Um, there's an amazing TED talk that Ken Robinson did. Um, I don't know if anyone, if there's anyone heard of Ken Robinson. So Ken Robinson, yeah. An amazing guy who really talks a lot about the power of creativity. And I think what's so brilliant about him is he's able to talk to a room and help people understand why creativity is so important in our lives. And I think um, his, one of his TED Talks was um, why dance is more important than maths. Um, and I just love it because it isn't actually about why dance is more important than maths. What it is about though is saying that we're all creative and we all create differently and we all need different ways of expressing ourselves and we all learn differently. You know, a lot of his TED Talks are aimed um, at teachers and schools and the education system. Um, and how do we learn? And how do we think? And what is the role of creativity uh, in all of that? And I really encourage you to, to look at his TED Talks if you haven't seen them. They go on for quite a long time. He does like to chat. Uh, but, but really worth um, listening to. Um, and I think 
you know, that, that focus on how we release our creative creativity and the importance of it to our lives. Um, it's really essential um, to everything that I've always done and, and hopefully through this program, if you all uh, apply and take part in it, um, something that you'll be able to explore as well. So I think just, um, so, that, so those are my kind of um, reasons, I suppose, for wanting to be here. And I remember back in 91, 1991, I went over to New York and I, um, I went to visit the Big Apple Circus, which at that time was the biggest circus company uh, in the state of New York, uh, sorry, in the city of New York. Um, and lots of people donated things. Uh, Michael Jackson would host the circus for all of the kids in the city that um, didn't have parents or in the kind of social services system. Um, Paul Newman, famous actor, used to make the popcorn from his popcorn factory. It was a, it was a great project, and probably the same size as something like the Royal Opera House or Birmingham Royal Valley or that kind of scale. Um, um, but one of the projects they led was um, these clown doctors. So they trained these clown doctors who would go into hospitals and particularly be uh, on the wards with terminally ill children. And I went on one of these walkabouts with the clown doctors one day. Um, and it was so powerful because these children are dying. Um, at that time, actually, a lot of them were dying through AIDS-related illnesses. Um, and the clowns were trained to understand kind of, you know, what they were going through, what was happening in their lives, and actually how to just do something very small that would really lift, lift them and give them that bit of hope, that moment of joy that we all need in our lives. Um, and I was really impressed by the power arts and culture can have then. You know, it really can touch you and make that moment of change that maybe makes other parts of our life a little more, more tolerable. Um, so I think as we've been approaching the city of culture, one of the big things for me is what is this change? What is it that we want to see happening in the city? Um, and there's lots of it. It's not one thing. Uh, it's lots of different things. Um, and in particularly, cities that get city of culture status, they often get city of culture status because they're a city that maybe hasn't had much love or investment, um, hasn't been recognized in the way that other cities have. Um, and so there are challenges and problems um, on the ground, and, and this is a chance to really tackle some of them, maybe in a more creative way. Um, and so one of the things we've been doing with the City Culture Team is really trying to think about what are those big concerns or issues that we face as a society here in the city, um, and how do we start to make that change happen? And I think this program is a really great example about how we collectively can do that. Uh, not just through the work we're doing um, uh, as part of the trust, um, but how we all come together to understand how to make life a bit better uh, in our city, how to improve lives for ourselves, but for other people as well. And actually, Coventry's a really, um, as I said, it's a city where people care, and I've seen it, I've been out and about, I've been to amazing projects, and. I've been into communities and I can see what's going on. And so for us, it's about supporting that change, supporting that great work, helping people um, be less isolated, thinking about mental health. It's a big issue. It's 50%, I think, in the city of people here um, claim to have a mental health-related uh, uh, issue. Um, that's massive in a city of this size. That's nearly 200,000 people. It's a huge number. Um, so how do we use this moment when we're really thinking about arts and culture and creativity to make some change happen so that we can start to think about some of those big issues in the city? And the same with our homeless communities. You know, we don't have the biggest number of street sleepers of, of a city, but it's still a very large amount. You know, in a Western democratic society, we shouldn't have people sleeping on the streets. Um, so how do we start to... Uh, understand uh, some of these things and how do we actually work with people with lived experience um, to really think about the change that we need to make happen and maybe people like street people sleeping on the streets and maybe that's okay um, and maybe we just need to make sure they're safe um, and secure um, and, and find different ways maybe there's not just one kind of um, uh, result or, or, or option uh, when it comes to these things so I think there's, um, for us, 
you know, all of these things, and I think in a major program like this, it's really about how do we harness the creativity that we all have as a city, because um, as my very good friend David Mitchell always says, we are all creative, um, and the UK has 64 million artists, because everyone is an artist. Um, and actually, how do we release our creativity uh, to bring joy to our lives and other people's lives, but also to make some change happen and to do something important, uh, to take some action, um, and how do we do that collectively? So I hope in this programme, these are some of the issues you're going to be thinking about and exploring, and I'm going to be really interested to hear how you're doing it, and at the same time as we're thinking about how City of Culture um, can really make some change happen in a city. Um, we've set ourselves some very ambitious targets, uh, we've got some great people in our team, but also our team isn't just the people we employ. Our team is all of you and all of the people in the city and the communities that we're working in. Um, and so for us, it's about how do we listen? How do we ensure that we have the authentic voice of the city right at the heart of the programme? And some of that will be about us creating frameworks with you and then thinking about how to populate those. You know, whether that's for a major event or, or, or a project. Sometimes it's just working together and being very strategic. So thinking together about the change we want to see happen and how we do that collectively rather than people feeling they're kind of, you know, chipping away at it on their own. Um, and and this, is, this is the moment we have, I think. And we've got some great artists in the city and other great artists that, that want to come and work with us in the city who can really help us to make some great change happen, great positive change that we will see the impacts and effects of uh, for many years to come. So that's why um, we're trying to make sustainable change. And, and I, I would say it's, of course, we want sustainable change that benefits communities, but it's also about communities creating that sustainable change with us. It's not about us doing it to people. And I think we have to be very mindful that, you know, we, we live in a world that the way that it's been designed and created is very top down. It's very hierarchical. Um, we're trying to change it, I think. I think there's a bit of a breakdown in democracy right now. And I think that change is happening. But it's for all of us to think about what that change could be. What, what does it look like? If we break down the democratic systems we've got and look at what works and what doesn't work, how do we put it back together again in a way that's, uh, I don't know, more um, co-designed or co-created with communities? Um, and, and how do we share the power and the leadership? Um, and, and, and how do we take responsibility for that as people? So I'm going to stop speaking, <laughs> but um, I have to go on for days on this. Um, it's really great that you're all here. I hope that you're going to put applications in. I know that we're trying to keep the process really simple, um, and there's lots of people here to help you if you need help. Um, but do take part in this, because this is when we can really make that change happen together. Thank you. Uh, um, absolutely. We are so thrilled that you're here today. Um, with us um, and we're really excited about this program and I want to say as well in terms of this program um, so much care has gone into this program already and we haven't even started so we're having lots of conversations about um, how we make this the most inclusive and brilliant opportunity for the people who get involved with this program um, because it's about you. We, we're all really interested and inspired by this idea of something that is quite person-centred uh, as well as being collaborative. Um, so those two key things are really important is that we um, develop a program that is scaffolded around the interests and the needs of the individuals that are involved in the program as well as the, the, the group, the, the, the cohort who will collaborate together so I just want to give you a little clue there that collaboration is really important within this process. But I also wanted to acknowledge the wonderful team that we're working with that I, I can't tell you how much we are questioning ourselves, questioning the process to get it right for you to make this a really unique experience uh, here in Coventry. Um, so 
just taking a step back, my name is Ruth Richardson and I'm really fortunate that I'm, I'm my second month into being uh, the Head of Team Development for the City of Culture Trust and I feel really, really delighted to be part of the, uh, of the team and I'm every day astounded by the individuals that I get to meet, including people like yourselves who are here today. Um, so a little bit about the team development role. So one of the things that I am responsible for is kind of overview of the HR personnel processes, what we do as a team, but also what we do outside of, of the team. Um, and I'm also responsible for the over, overview of training and development activities. So this is a key strand of work for me. Um, on, and so I'm really looking forward to being part of this process with hopefully yourselves. Um, and uh, we also have got some particular things that we want to let you know about. So one of the things that I'm responsible for is helping to shape the volunteer programme. And we're going to have thousands and thousands of people engaged in volunteering um, in the build up to 2021 and also during 2021 and actually after 2021, including a really brilliant city hosts programme. Um, so that will be that we will engage in people of Coventry to welcome other people of Coventry and other people from across the world to come and join us in, in Coventry during 2021. So volunteering is really important. But also I mentioned on Monday, we are looking to recruit, um, we'll launch this in the spring, um, apprentices of different ages, 16 plus. So we're going to be launching a 21 for 21 programme. Um, and that will be for young people, uh, young adults, but also 25 pluses. This is about career changes as well. Um, this is about people that want to do something different, maybe perhaps haven't experienced arts, heritage and culture, but have got something to give and something to gain. So that apprenticeship programme is going to be really fantastic. And we have loads of other training, development, participation, kind of events to engage with and access. Um, so please, whatever your journey is on this project, this programme, there are so many other ways in addition to this to connect with the City of Culture team. Um, you're welcome, and this is for us together. Um, so there's some really fantastic things that are happening as hopefully, you know, we're, we're, the, there's a little bit of secrecy around some of the things that are going on as we confirm the programme, but there are going to be some absolutely amazing events, projects, programmes that are going to happen towards the tail end of this year, like launching kind of from the summer, we're going to have a test event in the summer, which is going to be brilliant, and going into this amazing launch that we're going to do for 2021. And then we're going to have some fantastic events and activities that are going to happen not just in the city centre, but actually in all the wards across, the, across Coventry. So that's a really special uh, opportunity for all of us. And Shanine alluded to this earlier, but I think one of the things I love about this, about the City of Culture, and particularly Coventry's approach to City of Culture, is the uh, desire, genuinely, is that this is, not this is not done to the people of Coventry. There is some ex expertise that's coming from across the country, in some instances across the world, to come into Coventry, to work with people of Coventry. There's a balance there but it's not about it being something that happens to the people of Coventry. It's something that we do together. It's done with, it's done for, and also it's done by the people of Coventry. And I think that's what's wonderful about some of the work that's already underway in a number of settings. Some of you might be involved with some of my part, my part uh, my, uh, the people that we're uh, part of the team. So some of the producers, some of you may know some of the producers in the team who are doing brilliant work across, uh, in different settings across the wards. And the whole idea is that we're building communities, connecting communities, getting people mobilized, getting into the spirit of city of culture. So this is with, for, and by, and that's what I'm completely all about as an individual. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the, um, the leadership program. Um, and I want to, my colleagues can prompt me as well if there's anything that I miss. But as I've said, this is about um, you, your individual journeys, and this is also about how we collaborate. So there will be, we are going through a process of identifying 15 individuals that we want to work more closely with, that we want to nurture, um, and that we want to really um, kind of challenge you in terms of your own experience, your own um, aspirations. 
to um, give you uh, the, uh, the, te the team at People Make It Work work across the world, which is brilliant, and do amazing things. So um, we're going to be thinking about what we can do to enhance those ideas that you have um, and, and, and really bring in people and opportunities and events to expand on your ideas, expanding on your thinking, and really, truly help to cultivate you as leaders in your own right. And I know uh, people that have been involved with People Make It Work as one project partner, but a lead project partner in this, who've been involved in their work in the past have gone on to do amazing things um, in our sector and beyond, including really significant leadership roles um, in various different settings, in various different places. So what we're looking to do is really nurture not only your ideas, your individual plans, but also really thinking about how we can challenge you to think bigger, wider, move forward. And so uh, we're looking to work with 15 people to do that, to give you a really fantastic experience um, and scaffolding experience, uh, opportunities around you. So this is going to be kind of almost like an incubator space. This space is for us to work, to convene, to have events. Um, uh, but also you'll have the opportunity to um, go out and maybe do visits, perhaps in Coventry, perhaps across the UK, maybe further beyond, depending upon what you as individuals as part of the 15 or as a group decide that you want to do. So it's all about scaffolding the opportunity around you. And that's what makes this unique, to be honest. And this is what's a bit of a challenge for us as well, is because unlike other leadership programmes where maybe the experience has been thought out, mapped out. So um, some professional coaches, training professionals, will kind of think about what's the experience we want these individuals to go through? What is it that we would like them to understand, to learn? That's not what's happening with this. It's completely turned on its head. What we're doing is providing an opportunity that is shaped around what you're telling us. And I do truly think that is an incredibly unique experience and opportunity. What we also want to say is... If you're not one of the 15, we are still, so that, that we are going to just nurture a core group, but we are also looking at what opportunities we build into this program to make sure that other people that, that aren't that selected group can still connect, can access opportunities, can engage with the program, as well as additional opportunities. So what we really are absolutely committed to is no one is a loser in this situation. It's not about that. Yeah, exactly. We don't want anyone to feel, um, if, if you don't move forward through the, so there's the application process and we've got the rest of this week and next week, and I think it's 10 o'clock, is it, on Friday, tw on, yeah, on the 28th, to get applications in. Please, please do apply. It's really, really important that you, that you believe in yourself. Um, we talked about this on Monday, and I'm going to say it again. You know, let's do the show of hands again. Sort of, who who has actually taught themselves out of an opportunity in the past? I stand here today telling you I talked myself out of this job, out of this opportunity. I had an hour to go to apply. I talked myself out of it, and then I took my dogs for a walk and I had an intervention with myself. And I went, "What's wrong with you?" But I had all the reasons to, to, to not do it, to not proceed. So I was going to send an email to say, hey, here's my CV and let me know if you, please love me, choose me for something else. And then I just thought, get a grip, woman. What is wrong with you? And I, and I literally, that's the fastest application I've ever done. And I'm so proud of myself because here I am and I'm part of this amazing thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But it's true, I mean it, and I'm just saying that because I know I look like, I don't know, white, middle-class, middle-aged woman, probably with trimmings that say that I work in this sector, but I'm also someone that lived not too far away from here with no opportunities as a child growing up. So it's a big deal to be here. It's not just my adult me that's proud of myself because I fixed up and I did my application. But my younger me is looking at me and going, do you know what? Actually, that's a massive journey. Well done, you. So I'm just saying to you, please do not talk yourselves out of this opportunity. Talk yourselves into this opportunity. And one final thing, because I know we've got, we need to move on, um, and hopefully I've answered everything that we need to. Um, I read, uh, on this point that I'm saying, I read... Um, 
ages ago, I'm not a Guardian reader, please don't judge me for that one way or another. Um, often I get my news from Facebook, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's terrible. But um, I did read an article that had been shared around that um, was really interesting to me, and it was uh, an article that said, how can we be more like you? And I really connected with it because I spent a lot of my time learning how to be the right kind of person for this sector, for work, the working world. And I think we are told how we're supposed to be, how, you know, we're kind of almost conditioned in a way to be a particular way. And that, um, particularly in our sector, that sometimes is quite elitist, we know we need to fix up, we know we've got some challenges in relation to how people are recruited, how they're able to come in through the door, um, sort of even in entry level positions. You know, there's loads of jobs when you look at it critically. You shouldn't need a degree to do some jobs. And we put all of these hoops in there, all of these hurdles. Um, and, and we need to really address that as a sector. And I hope this programme is going to do that. I, we're all committed to that. Um, but there's something about saying that you don't have to be all of those things that we think that we should be. We want to create a space for new people, for new leaders. And that's really important within this programme that you don't have to be the archetypical leader or the ar archetypical heritage, arts heritage culture person. We want to shift this around and turn it upside down and bring some new people um, to, to nurture. So I really hope that you do talk yourselves into this opportunity. So thank you very much. So I'm really aware of time. And we're going to try and quiz through some final information just to help you go away from here knowing how to apply, etc. Firstly, thank you for everyone that has delivered. So Shaleen, Lenare, Ruth, Christabel, the Beatrix team, Ellen, Hill, Aaron. And thanks to all of you for the injection of what you've brought. It's been beautiful to watch and listen and share. So thank you. I feel like round of applause is really good. So, don't talk yourself about this opportunity. Ruth said it. Like, um, we're really excited for the, the potential of this and the co creative of it. Um, in terms of how you get involved, you need to apply. The application process uh, is online um, at this link, commentary2021.co.uk forward slash leadership, and it will lead you to an application form. And there's three questions. We try to really make it a short process. The questions are about you telling us who you are, what's your story? The question, uh, the second question is around the change that you want to see, your idea, even if your idea is at the very beginning of those stages. Even if you've not experienced being a leader yet, you don't feel like you're a leader, this is totally for you. Even if you're someone that has led loads, this is still totally for you. And then the third question is around what you feel you can bring to the cohort, but also what you'd like to learn from it. If you need any extra support in completing the application, please get in touch with us. We will work with you. Okay? What else around? Do you I want to give you that video, sorry, yeah. if you need any help? So on the um, application page, there's an email, which is something like recruitment at Coventry. 2021.co.uk. Yeah. Um, and then just to kind of run over the, the steps after that, so um, we're expecting to get those applications come in, and that's brilliant. Um, and from that point, we will then be inviting, we imagine, around 75 or so people to come to another event. Um, so these are development days. Um, they're an opportunity for us to get to know you better, to find out more about you find out more about your idea, to um, have more opportunity for you to meet other people, to work collaboratively in the way that you have done this afternoon, um, and to forge your own thinking. So whilst those days form part of the selection process, they also, we hope, will be of value in and of themselves. 
Um, so even if then there's not um, an opportunity for you to progress at the final cohort of 15, that that day will have helped you by making connections um, and thinking through you know, where you're at with the change you want to make. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there'll be, as we've said, sort of signposting um, and inviting you to take part in other opportunities in the broader um, city and culture program. So the deadline for application is 10 a.m. on the 28th of February. The development days of which we will be inviting you to one. You don't just come to all three, just one of those days. They're the 10th, 11th and 12th of March. Then there will be, a, 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 and I was saying to someone earlier that after those development days, there will be a kind of balancing act because we want that final 15, yes, to have kind of you know, met a certain set of criteria, but also to be a mix of people. So it's about what's the kind of magic mix that will make that 15. So there's, there's kind of a bit of a, of a juggle around um, diversity of experience, age, where you live, all of those things to create that cohort. Um, and then the first session is the 30th of March. So they're the sort of key dates. It's all on the website. Um, and also just to say that like right from today, the moment we meet you, we feel like you're kind of you're connected, <laughs> you're in that loop. Um, and right from today, we want to hear, we want to listen, we want to hear your thoughts. So um, anything that we hear back about this event today, about this afternoon, we will, it, it, we will kind of use to how we design the rest of the program. There's some forms on your tables. Um, this is an opportunity for you to share your feedback. Um, so anything that you think has been rubbish, tell us. We need to know this stuff. Anything you think has worked really well for you, tell us so that we can do more of the same. Um, and you are going to stick around while we're going to up. So if you have specific questions, you want to come to talk to us on a one-to-one -on -one basis,